welcome back to another video. We're on the last circle of peanuts today and we're trying to fit eight bags in the seat tender. We normally put six, but we're gonna try to see if we can squeeze eight of them in here. We might have to do a little bit of shoveling, but I don't know. We already got six in here for sure. Can we fit another one on that side and on this side? It'll cut it close, but we're gonna try. Yeah, she'll definitely be full. Probably won't be able to fit another peanut in here after this bag, which we almost got it all in here. Making it work. Yeah, she might be plump full. I'm actually kind of curious how many pounds we got in here. I know it's not going to be a lot, but because with wheat, you can definitely fit more in here, and we've definitely had a lot in here before. But still kind of curious. Only 16.7. That's it. I thought it would be like closer to 18, but we're only 16.7. Not for peanut seed, it's not a lot. Yeah, but. So I hope that that's going to be enough seed. The other seed tender is also pretty full. That one only has like, I think, seven bags in there. And uh, I think with our calculations, we might need another half a bag or another full bag by the time we're done with this next field because the next field is 230 acres it's the one in the previous video where i listed up the small beds so let's hope it's good enough enough seed because we don't have any more here in the barn if we need more seed we'll have to actually go back to lone star and grab another bag or two but let's hope that's not the case because if we do have to go back into town that's that's going to be a a long day then because that, that takes up a lot of time just to go back and get more seed the reason why we filled this one up so much because we also didn't want to go back to the barn Field quite a ways away yet, so really, we really did not want to go back to town or back here to the barn to get more seed. So, head to the field now. We still got to go bring the planters to the next field. So, let's get started. I do actually got to take with five more boxes of first up, and then I also need from back here. I need another. I need just one more jug of A-frame. Don't need to take with everything, so. One jug, we'll finish this next field. That is uh, actually the same thing as a bound. Uh, pretty much just for, supposed to help with like the cold and diseases and stuff. So we put it on there. It doesn't cost a whole lot to do what we were doing per acre. So might as well put it on there. Had to make a little trip to the John Deere today morning. I have a I have a Royant sensor for the seed tube. That's what that is. Seed tube sensor that I had to buy. It was not. It was saying in my screen that I wasn't planting, but then you know you go you go back there and take a look at it and it, it's planting normal, just like just fine. Let's nothing wrong with it seed spacing is good it's just I don't know just bad seed sensor I guess so uh, after a while after a while that I was saying it was doing less seeds per acre than I actually was which it wasn't uh, and it took maybe like 30 minutes of it being weird and then it was then it's, the code started popping up that uh, seed sensor error or whatever so then I figured oh okay so it is just a See, there's something wrong with this seat sensor. So, I don't have my truck here now. I know my, I might need one or two tools. So, I'm just gonna fold up this planter. We're heading to the next field anyway. So, that's where I parked my truck. Once I get over there, then I'll replace that seat sensor. Yeah, so this is the sensor right here that I'm assuming is the bad one. So, cool thing, which. I know you you pay, you pay you pay a lot of money regardless, but that actually came with zip ties. I thought I was gonna have to use my own, but that looks fairly simple on how to replace it. Just one connection there, and then it looks like it just has to wrap around it. So that sensor is connected with one wire to a little flat piece right there, and then the 
I guess a front sensor, I guess. But let's get this guy switched out. Out with the old and in with the new. And as usual, we got front tank filled with our inoculant and our uh, insecticide. Now just to fill up some peanut seed and get in the field. Vacuum on, float on, and then uh, just gonna prime everything. Wait for that vacuum to pressure up. Ah, the good white dust. Prime that one a couple times, I'll also prime my liquid. I just want to make sure every row unit has seed and hydrogen coming out of it. That should be good enough. Looks like my pressure is finally building. Every time filling up a, a new tank, there's always a lot of air in the lines and always takes about a minute for it to pressure up. But looking, looking down there, I want to see hydrogen seed and the liquid coming out of it. Gonna check all 16 rows. Like row number 10, the one that I was messing with, uh, looks like should be planned now. Yep, okay, yeah, it's planned. We're good. I'll a new sensor in there, so I should be able to tell if it's not planting or not now. Let's hope that sensor works. Looks like we're good to go, and we're rolling. This feels actually quite bumpy just because uh, there was still a lot of wheat stubble and a lot of roots and everything, so it kind of fell off the row and back down. So it's gonna be a little bit rough, but from what I'm seeing behind me, it actually looks really good. It looks so good enough to where I can actually, normally listing on beds, we like to keep the pressure in our airbags, so as low as we can go, we put them at 15. But here by these beds, it definitely looks like it's it's doing a good enough job where I can raise my airbag pressure. I think I might raise it to like 75. Get a little bit more down pressure on those row units. Anywhere else where, where the beds are a little bit softer, if, I, if we add any, any pressure in the airbags, then we're literally planting. It'll squash it down enough to our plant like in a valley. We don't really want that, but here it looks good. I think, I think we can add a couple of pounds in our airbags. But my row number 10 is working now. Love that. You love to see it. Guess that's just what the issue was. Having that, having that sensor beep at, beep at me yesterday. Oh, that was that was a pain. I got so frustrated. To I just I just went in here, went click row number 10 and clicked off. So all the other rows were on except that one was off. So it was still planting, but it, the, the sensor was off, right? So every, everything was still working fine back there, but. Uh, it, it thought the row was off, so then it stopped beeping at me all day long, but it was still was planting good, so we made it through yesterday. By the time that sensor was causing the issues, then it was already 6 o'clock and John Deere house was already closed at that point, so couldn't get it yesterday, so I got it today morning. Yeah, now we got some, now we got some randos on our channel. Get off our channel, this is ours. We're using number 20. Get off of it. I guess we we can hear them, but they can't hear us. I'm assuming they're on handhelds. We got the big antennas on the roof, so we can we can hear from lots of miles away. So they probably cannot hear us, but it sure is annoying. We might have to change the channel if they don't stop talking. Because we need, we need our channel to be open and free. But this is working very, very good. That's better than what I thought. It looks really good. It's nice and wet underneath. We definitely don't need a water, but this field doesn't have any residuals on it yet. And we need to spray at least some sort of residual because there's a lot of nut grass in this field and weeds are gonna start coming up because it's so wet. So we need to spray some sort of residual on there and that residual needs to be watered in. Even though the peanuts aren't gonna need water right now, if they're planting in the wet ground, we'll still have to water like half an inch or something just to where we can uh, for sure water in that residual. This pivot is moving out of the way, but this tower right here, oh, perfect, it moved one more time. I should not have to, I'm, I don't hope I better, I better not hit it. I'm gonna slow it down a little bit. Oh, we're golden. Oh, perfect, you love to see it. 
And you love to see it. 11.2 acres out of seed and gotta fill up more. That was one round. And that was on this, uh, what we call a half miler. The pivot, the pivot itself is half a mile long. The rows, because the pivot makes a full rotation, so the rows are a mile long. So mile long rounds, one round and you're out of seed. Man, I love my long rounds. You actually got time to eat your lunch instead of turning around every five seconds. Yeah, I remember back in the day when we didn't have those extensions on there. And uh, that was rough. We had to have a seed tender on each end of the field. And you could only make one pass and then you had to fill up seed. One pass, fill up seed. It was a little bit rough. These extensions, they've helped out a lot. They're, they're allowing us to do 11 acres instead of, what was it, seven that we could do. And one pass is almost six acres. So we, did, we didn't, back in the day, we didn't have to fill them up all the way. That part was nice. You could just put a little bit of peanuts in there and you'll for sure make it to the end. That's all you did. But it just, it just sucked having a seed tender on that end and on that end, having to fill up so many times. It, it really wasted a lot of time. So these have been a very big time saver love those extensions it just it's a little rough when you when you uh, switch over to planting cotton we just don't fill the boxes up too much because it is a lot of weight it's 16 rows it's a lot of weight that's in there if you're gonna be planting all day long and you're gonna be using all the seed then might as well but if you're gonna be moving from field to field we'll just try to not fill them up too much just that way it's not as much strain on the whole planter and everything but Still rolling along, you love to see it. Couple of rounds, that little bit right there, and already done 18 acres, so as the other planter. This field's gonna fly by, and then we'll be done with planting peanuts for this year. It's the last field, very excited. Then we can move on and start planting cotton. Even on this end of the field where the pivot started, like we, we pre-watered this before we're planting and the pivot started on this end of the field, made its way all the way back to that end of the field. So it's a lot wetter behind me than it is here in front of me. But once I get to the end, I'll show you how wet it is underneath the ground. And I'm even shocked myself how, how wet it is underneath the ground. I thought for sure a lot of it would have dried out by now already, but it's still very wet. Peanuts are going very nicely into wet ground. Once I get here to the end, then I'll show y'all where you want to stop in the middle of the field, but once I get to the end, I'll show y'all. When you get out to the field here, it's just, I walk a little further. Right here, it's just, that's just pure wet sand. Yes, it's sand. We have lots of sand. Granted, this field has a little more clay in than most, but it's very good wet soil right there. There's a peanut in wet ground. Where is the next one? Why are you hiding from me? Oh, there you go. That's actually a pretty big gap right there. I don't really like that. But I bet you then right after this one, yep, look at that. There's two of them. Happens every time with peanuts. You only get some so accurate, but that's wet ground right there. You love to see it. Let's fill up more seed. 60 acres done and time to fill up this tank again. This is the part that is very annoying though. It comes in a bottle and a little baggie. You gotta take that bottle, mix it into there, shake it up, and then you can put it in your tank. So I just stick here, I do, I'm supposed to do all six of these, 10 or one per 10 acres. So I'm here mixing all these together and then I can finally put them in my tank. And as I'm saying, I'm going to mix it here together. I open this box. There's just a bag. There's not a bottle. They, uh, they forgot to package it wrong. Hey, quit throwing stuff at me. They forgot, to, they forgot to package it. Look at that. 
Ready for another 60 acres. Definitely some clouds brewing off in the distance, but sadly it's not coming our way. Maybe next time it'll hit us. Just two more passes and then we are done with this field. And then Peanuts 2024 are gonna be done. And the sprayer is right behind us. He's uh, right away spraying on a residual. And just a final burn downer. He's spraying something. I don't know what he's spraying. That's a bunch of random chemicals, random chemical names this year, so I'm not familiar with any of the new ones. But regardless, he's there's no residuals on here yet, so he's spraying right behind us. We're almost done. Oh, that's the last of Peanuts 2024. Well, since the peanuts are done, we're gonna flip that auger around right there. Empty out our boxes, put all the seed back in the seed tender. Any leftover seed can go back to Lone Star. They can have their seed back. And uh, we can probably switch over to cotton. I don't know if we'll plant cotton tomorrow, but it'll be one of the next few days that we'll start planting cotton. So, we're getting work done. Love it, peanuts are done. Boxes are empty. And whoa, that tarp's gonna fly away. Look what have it. That, uh, that storm off in the distance is, you can tell it's bringing wind over here that we did not want. And with the wind, our fields are blowing again. That's, that's just a mess. We barely sand fought one field and now it's blowing again. There ain't nothing we can do about it. It was wet and we sand fought it. Now it's blowing again. Monday is more chance for wind. Tuesday also, it's, every day is just wind. Every day is a mess, but hey, we got the peanuts in the ground. Now it's just start watering everything and uh, start sand fighting. That's fun. And uh, hopefully planting cotton here in the next few days. We'll see what happens. We, we'll see when, when we'll have time. We gotta do a couple of things with some pivots first. So we'll end up getting all that done. And then once, once that's ready, once that's up and going, then we'll start planting cotton. But as for this video, as always, I do appreciate y'all for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.